Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, you know what? In my last video, I challenged you to find some more studies on this uh, word rib in Genesis 2, and to find out if it really should have been translated as rib or as side. Now, was the woman formed from this teeny little rib, or was the woman uh, really formed, and I'm saying the word formed because that's what the Bible translators use. The woman was not created. She was formed. In other words, in order to form something, you have to have the ingredients to form something. So this woman was formed, okay? Was she formed from this teeny little uh, um, uh, rib? Of course, it wasn't a penis bone. I probably made fun of that last time. Or was it, was she formed from the side? And I continued to do some more research and actually came across uh, some more studies. And one of the studies was really good um, and it was from a website which again I will give you um, on the bottom I will um, I will put the information on the bottom about this this is on what's uh, it's www.studylight.org um, and it is a, an article it's a language it says language study. Hebrew thoughts, that's what it was, a language study. Okay, and in this language study, um, he went into depth about Sela, and the way he wrote it down is not the Z S E L A, it's T S E L A. A. I don't know why they, they keep spelling it differently, but this Hebrew uh, study is looking at this Hebrew word Sela, which is T-S-E-L-A, okay? Um, it says, comes from the verb, verb Sala, to curve, limb, be lame, Inclined to one side, okay. Inclined to one side. Now, how in the word curve? Okay, you could think um, limb. Limb, of course, is, is you know an arm or something. Uh, be lame and inclined to one side. Okay, that's what the Strong's definition is of sala or sala. Okay. Now. Okay, so now this author is looking at different translations, which I already mentioned. The noun, which is a noun, Sela, is used frequently in Exodus, 18 times, that's frequently, to describe the opposing sides of the Ark of the Covenant. So, the sides of the tabernacle and the altar. So it is a word that is used to describe an actual physical structure, okay, building structure, okay? So 18 times it is described in Exodus, used, uh, again, it is used throughout Ezekiel also uh, as side chamber of the temple, okay, similarly also in 1 Kings. Now, in 1 Kings, it describes um, also the two door panels. Now, if you can imagine um, the two, two door panels, right? You can imagine that. A big, huge door that has two panels, and it kind of opens up like that, okay? Now, you know these two panels are what? Equal, okay? So there are two sides, two equal sides. 
um, and in especially in First Kings six thirty four, it is described as two door panels or leaves or sides, two turning leaves for one door. Okay, so we can see that these things are structural and give you specific um, a specific picture of two sides of something. Okay, no place. Is it translated with the rib? There is not even one bitty uh, similarity to a rib. Okay, there's also references to this word, translations, okay, creation story instance for, we find um, by Job, okay, where it says destruction is ready at his side. Again, you side is used. And in 2 Samuel 16, 13, where it is used with, Par and means hill mountain, okay, or hillside, okay. It's not hill rib, it's hillside, okay. So har must be the hill, of course, and then par and the word um, sella means hillside, okay. So we can see clearly. Not one time was it translated as rib, except, of course, right there in Genesis. And again, we don't know for sure. I still don't know who was the first one to translate it as um, rib. I read another study, and I don't have it with me right now. I mean, there's one right here. Um, where it says that in the Septuagint, and last time I said that in the Septuagint, they actually translated it as rib, but another very good studies showed that it actually wasn't so, that rib or cella was translated as something different, as side in the Septuagint. This is also um, very uh, uh, clear when we read, of course, Philo the Jew. Um, and also in the Midrash, Talmud, and of course, uh, Maimonides, and I have mentioned Maimonides, I think, before, and Rashi, they are both um, commentators of Talmud. They also uh, believe it was uh, the side and not the rib, okay? The Jerusalem, Targum, Latin Vulgata, Volgata, and the Eraic Bible version all render Sela aside and not rib in Genesis 2. Okay, so there's lots and lots um, of references that clearly show that this word uh, Sela is absolutely falsely translated in Genesis. I have also another article, and that article is from, let's see, I need to open it up. It's from the Adventist Today uh, magazine. I think it's a magazine. Um, and there's an article in there called Not a Rib, and that article is by Jack Hoon, H O E. H N Hearn, and I'm reading it to the German way Hearn. and so he wrote this article not a rib which is also very helpful and he did a lengthy study on rib and he came up with the same kind of information as the previous one I just mentioned and he comes to the conclusion um, that the woman is not formed of the dust like the first human being, and that it is uh, just very bad for men um, to, and he uses this, ripped women. Many male lips have ripped women, and it helps me to understand that the translation era has served to diminish women from their equality at creation with men. 
My sisters are not a rib. They are my equals. Um, that's this writer, right? Um, and he says that if we believe that a, a woman is not equal, um, the equal side, um, you know, of a man, uh, then or the, the equal side with a man, then we are crippling the body of Christ. Okay, it's just like when Jacob was uh, uh, injured in the hip and he limped. That's how he describes it. That when we hinder women from being fully uh, what they were intended, an equal side, if you envision these two doors, um, two leaves of a door. Imagine one door is, is only half um, or even more, less than that. It wouldn't even protect the house at all. It would definitely hinder. And that's what we're doing um, with uh, the church. If we are hindering women from fully being that side of the door. If we say, oh man, the man is the only door, the full uh, door, and women are just nothing. You know, they're just this little thing. So now how does that look, okay? Uh, people can enter that door and run it down. And that's what has happened. So this is a great um, article as, as well, and I will put it on the bottom uh, by Jack Hoon. Um, so here is something he read. He wrote, um, and he calls it, you know, I've been looking, what is this? What is this? He calls it the NJV, the NJV, um, Genesis 2. NJV, of course, I figured out finally, I believe, of course, is Jack, um, the Jack version. Um, let's see, what is his name? The new Jack, it's called the new Jack version. Okay, but he translated it himself, and it's interesting to read. He says, Yahweh God formed the human of dust from the soil. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the human became a living being. Yahweh God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the human. But Yahweh God said, it is not good for the human to be alone. I will make him an equal helper. Now, again, he used him. Why? Well, he could have used her, too. But it's just in the English, we have to use something. We can use it, okay, which would have been probably better. So he placed, he used him, not thinking that him was a man. I will make him or it an equal, an equal helper. So he had the human name. All the other animals and formed from formed from the soil, but found no equal helper for himself. Again, here's himself. And remember, in the original text, you do not have these pronouns. So Yahweh God put the human into a trance where he saw God take one of his two sides, close up the flesh, and Yahweh God turned this half of man into woman and brought her to the man who explained at last finally this is what i have been waiting for bone of my bone flesh of my flesh she shall be called isha woman because from ish the man she was taken therefore men leave parents and join with a woman for they were all for they were really two sides of one flesh. Great translation, except again, this person really had probably in mind also that this first human was a man. Because traditionally, we are absolutely brainwashed to believe that this first human was a man. There is no, absolutely no indication. I have said that so many times last time. Yes, no indication. I have read some other things 
that that show you know that biologically um you know it is like these two DNAs that that were split and have to come together to form actually human kind. Okay, I know I have some people, I have friends even that don't like my book because I said that uh, human beings um, are only perfect or not perfect, but whole as male and female. Okay, and I have a friend that does not like that. She believes each human being is whole. And I believe that, yes, we are whole to a certain degree, but I don't even think that each individual human being is whole. We are whole as a community, and that is exactly what we are. It's not done necessarily um, in, in marriage, but it is done in the church. In the church, we will be whole. Male and female together, men and women together form a whole. They complement each other and they, they have different gifts and um, different abilities. And they put these two different gifts and abilities together to form one whole human being. I believe after the fall, we became very, well, I don't believe it. I know it. We became very self-centered. We only look at ourselves. We look at ourselves as individuals. and But God did not have that in mind. God had in mind a community. Okay? A, just like the Trinity is a community. We think the Trinity is uh, three persons. Okay? I am not so uh, convinced that there's number one that there's only three persons, and it could be that they are, but I don't have any proof, okay? We don't know what's in God. We have no idea. There could be more, okay? That could, the God who, Godhead could be a lot bigger, okay? God, there could be more parts to God um, than just the three that, three that we know. Uh, but one thing I can guarantee that the bride of Christ, of course, we have the bridegroom, right, which is Jesus, and then we have the, the bride, which is the church. We know that the bride for sure is a community. It is more than one person. And if we are not allowing all people in that community to function properly, then we are what? Paralyzed. And that is exactly what um, this writer said, uh, this Adventist from Adventist Today. Is Jack Horn, um, it's exactly what he said. Um, you know, when we are not allowing, um, we are ripping, okay? We are ripping not only women uh, to par uh, to pieces, but we're also ripping men. In other words, we have a man that, that is standing on one foot, so to speak. What we have is one human being that's standing on a foot. Human being. A human being is made up of two legs, uh, two halves of, of, of a brain, okay? Right brain, left brain. Um, and so we need to put all the parts together. Uh, as Paul writes um, in Corinthians, the body is made up of many, many body parts. And, and if we only have an eye or only have an ear, only have a leg, that body is not complete. That body is um, disabled, okay? The body is disabled. So if we are not allowing women, and if we don't accept them as full, total full members of the church, or it could be like in marriage as well, okay? Because I really believe the man is disabled. That's why God said it's not good for this human being to be alone, okay? And he made it very, very clear. This human being should not be alone. It is better for that human being to be divided, and then there's two halves, and they can support each other. Of course, what happened when he divided the human being? Well, here we have more than just two. We all of a sudden have a whole bunch of 
humankind, lots of humans that, oh, sorry, I'm yawning, that are now split and they have to come together as one again. Okay? And if, if they come together as one, Christ or Jesus, the head, kind of unites them and makes them one again. That's why we're celebrating what? The Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper symbolizes this unity out of pieces coming together to one loaf of bread in the body. Um, and so, but every part in that body is equal. And if we do not accept people as equals, okay, then um, the body cannot function um, successfully. And that's exactly what we have been having, is we are having a body that is uh, disabled, a body that is um, lame, half lame, okay? Imagine a body that's half lame. Uh, what do you get? Uh, you can't function very well with a half lame body. Let's assume you're half side. You had a stroke and that half side is gone. And you know what? How can you talk with a half lame body, you know? Uh, one eye is not working very well. And, and, you know, this arm is just limping and you can't pick anything up. And your leg, you can't walk either. You have to have a cane. And, oh, my goodness, I only have one arm. So how are you going to do that? Okay. So our body has to function properly and in order to function properly guess what we need two halves of the human being two equal halves okay two equal halves and again we need to um we need to demand we need to demand from our translators that they translate our bible correctly okay none of this inconsistency anymore if i have um i think he said 80 percent no 90 90 percent the 90 percent of the translations were temple references when they translated this word seller 90 percent were temple references temple references had nothing to do with 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 a rib okay nothing okay so if we, we have 99% of these translations or even more uh, referring to the side and then all of a sudden, because we want to demean women, we will translate it as a rib. Um, no. Okay. It's time we change that. And it's time to live. We live up to it. Okay. I just do not want to accept these little uh, excuses anymore. You know, there was a time when I first started writing my book that I was very hesitant, was very hesitant to come out and scream it out there and say, people, you are wrong. You are translating these things wrong. And uh, because I didn't have the information. Well, guess what? If you just go on the Internet. OK, you can find tons of information. Yeah, there's these crazy dudes in there that, you know, one that believe that you know the penis bone was uh, the woman was formed from the penis bone but you know overall look for for these good studies like this language study hebrew you know hebrew thought language study um there is tons or do your own if you're a hebrew scholar do your own studies i have a friend and uh, he is a, a, a rabbi he went to rabbi school He's a Christian, but he also went to rabbi school. And um, he speaks, of course, Hebrew. He reads the Hebrew um, scripture. And I just sent him a message not too long ago, actually yesterday. And I asked him, what do you think? When do you think this uh, mistranslation happened? And he said, there's lots of debates about that, but nobody can really say it. But he says he also believes that it is, should be translated aside. Okay, well, there you have it. I will finish up today and continue your studies. I think I had to add this today. And I will put it on the bottom and you can read it for yourself. Have a good day and let the Holy Spirit guide you.